Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelves because like all piratical women, I have to make my father proud. Today we are going to be talking about Daughter of the Pirate King and the sequel, the name of which is a spoiler, so I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. I'll just hold up the first book. <laughs> as far as I remember, I've had these for a fair few years, I'm pretty sure both of them were gifted to me by friends or family, regardless of where books are coming from, nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. There are a couple of content warnings that apply, this isn't like a particularly dark series, but there are a few elements that you might want to look out for, so I will link the story graph for this series below. And also, right, the title of the second book is a spoiler, I'm not gonna get into spoilers, it's not a particularly unique spoiler, but if you do want to read book one, if you're desperate to read book one and you don't want that element spoiled for you, I'm gonna ask you to click away now. Pause this video, go read book one, come back when you've read book one. It'll be fine, I promise. For everyone else, if you're not over fussed, it's not gonna ruin the series for you whatsoever. Nothing's going to go terribly wrong, I just thought I would mention it. Are they gone? Okay, so The Daughter of the Pirate King and The Daughter of the Siren Queen is a YA fantasy duology that first started in 2017, so around about the time that I was fully on the bookish internet, which explains why I own these. Trisha Levenseller, the author, is a YA fantasy author who has written a fair few different things, a couple of which we're gonna talk about in this chunk of Overbooked. I've not read all of her stuff by any means, but I've read some, uh, and the some that I've read I have enjoyed. I'm going to read you the blurb of this because I am very tired and I do not have the brain to come up with the plot here. Sent on a mission to retrieve an ancient hidden map, the key to a legendary treasure trove, 17-year-old pirate captain Alosha deliberately allows herself to be captured by her enemies, giving her the perfect opportunity to search their ship. More than a match for the ruthless pirate crew, Alosha has only one thing standing between her and the map, her captor. The unexpectedly clever and unfairly attractive first mate Raiden. But not to worry, for Alosha has a few tricks up her sleeve and no lone pirate can stop the daughter of the pirate king. If that description does not evoke for you, this is going to be a fun, piratical, romancy time, I don't know what you were reading because for me, that description alone, I'm like, I know what I'm getting in for. I understand the tone. I understand the ideas. I understand what I'm getting and I'm excited to receive it into my eyeballs. And for the most part, I would say this duology does deliver on the expectation. If you are not here for, oh, there is only one bed in my cabin, this is not going to be a series for you. Um, I think it's interesting. It's pitched at she's 17. I think you could read it as an older YA reader. You could read it as a slightly younger YA reader and still have a pretty good time with it, which is always a good thing for me. The flip side of that we'll come on to in a moment. But I think for the most part, if you're here for quips and corsets and just kind of like arbitrarily throwing a corset on top of outfits, I don't know what you're talking about. If you are here for that, you will have a good time. I think there is something for a book that just does what, what you want it to do. Uh, I personally am very here for that, particularly on the days where I just need something to just go into my mind that isn't too long. This book is just over 300 pages and it's quite big font. So it's a nice shortish story that you can just read and be done with. You could read the whole duology in a weekend. It would be a great time. I also think that as much as the romance is really kind of tropey and cliched, as is the whole book, um, it's it's nice. It's a good romance. It has a couple of moments of like, oh, just talk to each other, please. Just have a conversation. Everything will be solved. But if you're in the right mindset for, I'm going to read this non-communicative relationship right now and I'm going to have a good time with it, it's a good time. I'm always here for girls with swords as well, and she has swords, and that's great. Now, obviously, flip side of all of that, if you are not here for YA, if you're not here for a fairly cliched, stereotypical YA pirate heroine, if you are not here for that kind of romance, if none of that appeals to you, don't pick this up. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but really don't pick this up. There are some books that are tropey YA that you can still enjoy, even if you're not really here for that. This is not one of those. This is this is a series you need to be in the mood for, okay? In some ways, this is quite a simple review in that sense because it's basically, these are all the good things, but if you don't like them, these are all the bad things, right? It's just a flip side. Um, I do think I'm personally a little bit burned out on the trope of daughter of the pirate king or pirate leader who has some daddy issues, right? I, I think maybe we can put that away now. But given that this came out in 2017, I'm okay with that. While I appreciate the book two exists and I appreciate finishing the story, I don't know that it needed to be a duology. I think you probably could have done a two-part book given that book two is 330 pages 
I think you could have cut out some of the bump and put it all together into like a slightly longer YA book. I understand that in 2017 YA books were not that long, uh, but I feel like if it came out now, I think you could smush it into one and have a good time. Comparisons, other things you might want to read. Uh, next week we are going to talk about Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller, so stay tuned for that, but I think that that has some similar similar vibes. There's also a bunch of other Trisha Levenseller books that I haven't read that I could recommend here but I haven't read them so I can't. Also YA tropey stuff that I've read recently, The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni ticks all of those boxes for me in terms of like predictability, comfort reading. The most obvious comparison is obviously the Hours of Storm and Sorrow series, which I've done a review for reasonably recently within the last six months, I would say, by Bex Hogan. Um, I personally ended up unhauling that series, not because I didn't enjoy it, because it wasn't going to be something I would want to reread. I don't know if maybe it's because these are hardbacks and I have a harder time letting go of them. A harder time, not a pun intended. Um, but I think that because this is shorter and slightly leans more into some of the tropes, that I do want to have it around for the time where I'm like, I just want to read pirates. I just want to read YA pirates. Uh, this is this is the one I would reach for out of the two of them, right? As you all know, I've been gradually moving more and more away from the YA that I keep on my shelves. And it's interesting, overbooked as an experience is always uh, going back to read some of those old favourites or some YA books that when I was in my early 20s, uh, I kind of felt like I was reclaiming some of my teenage years where I wasn't reading because I was too busy studying and all of that stuff. And now as the age that I am, I'm a little bit more discerning with what YA I keep hanging around. And I'm not saying that these are going to make it through every book purge ever, but for now, I do want to keep them. And for now, I would recommend them um, if you are like me and you are in a similar place with YA. If you absolutely love all YA all of the time. You're not going to have a problem with these. But yeah, what are your recommendations for pirate books? I'm always here for some pirates. Uh, I've made multiple videos where I talk about how much I love pirates or seafaring books, uh, so I would love to add some more to my shelves, particularly if they are adult fantasy or adult anything really, um, because I, it's been a while uh, since I've picked one up that I've gone like, ah yeah, that hit the spot. Like the Bone Ship series ended and I was I was devastated and I haven't found anything to fill that gap yet. Equally, if you've read any of Trisha Levenseller's other stuff and you have recommendations, please do tell me them because I think, I think I've only read these and, and next week's one, Warrior of the Wild. Uh, and I should probably read more because it is an enjoyable time. Uh, and when I want YA, I really do want like this. I want this. While you're down there commenting all of those recommendations, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have a wonderful time talking about books. Nothing makes me feel more loved and appreciated than my patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to join their number, that's linked below as well. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith, and today, 